Well, let's see the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Welcome right back. And just this is quickly, we look at the issue of uh, the new appointment of a deputy governor in or your state. And uh, let's quickly look at this track. We'll come back as we have Nika Gule who joins the conversation. Stay with us. Yeah, General Falani, I stand removed from the office with effect from today, Monday, 18 July 2022. Those in favor that the House do adopt the recommendation in this report say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. On this day, 18 July 2022, the Deputy Governor, His Excellency Engineer Ralph Alaniyom, stands removed from office with immediate effect. Rauf Olaino has been uh, impeached, of course, uh, because of his defection, very eminent, uh, from, uh, you know, the PDP to the APC at the end of the year. Now you're having a new deputy governor that will be sworn in, or has already been sworn in. Nika Gule is here. But, Nick, let's get to the conversation really up. I mean, the issue of defection is very, very prominent in our political space. I don't know how far... Uh, or how soon we're going to get over the issue of defection because it's something that has been going on for a very long time. For instance, let me take you through this now. The current, you know, um, flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, once upon a time, was in the People's Democratic Party. He left to the ACN, and then he went back, you know, to the ACN. Apparently, he left the ACN to the APC and to the APC to the PDP. There's been a lot of back and forth. You have different persons, governors who have defected. Akpabio, once upon a time, used to be with the PDP. He's left to the APC. The governor, current governor of Corsica State, was of the PDP. He's left to the APC. You have a lot of them. Or Jews or Kalu. The list is almost endless. Uh, the question here, now here is uh, Nika Gule. Do we have legal restrictions as to defection for political parties or persons who have to move from one party to another? Much uh, mercy uh, and good morning to our viewers. I don't, to answer your question directly, I don't think there is any barrier or legal restriction for people defecting from one party to the other because the Constitution of Nigeria guarantees us a freedom of association. And so people are free to form associations, to belong to associations, to exit associations, to join new associations. And that is how political parties are also considered. But the issue of defection is, in as much as it does not break any laws, it is a moral issue. Because you cannot say today you are a member of a party and that party is having its own agenda, and that agenda is different from the other party. And then tomorrow, you now abandon the agenda of this party and then go over to the other party that you were criticizing. So this comes down to the absence of ideologies in our parties, you cannot see clearly what these parties stand for. You know, elsewhere, where we have parties with ideologies, like in the UK here where I'm speaking to you from now, the two dominant parties are the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. And all of them have their different ideologies on every issue. If you look at immigration, for instance, the Conservative Party, they don't want immigration. They don't believe immigration should be free and open to people. The Labour Party wants immigration. They want people to come, integrate them, let them be part of the society, let them contribute to the, to the UK economy. If you look at something like taxes, as you would have been listening to the current debate and leadership uh, contest, for the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party, they don't like, ta they don't like taxes. They, they want a small government so that people will have their money to make their own economic decisions. They don't like the idea that government should go and be taking people's money through taxes so that government becomes powerful, big, and government is now making all the decisions. 
The Labour Party is totally different. The Labour Party want taxes. They want to take money from people so that they can have money, the government will have money, and then embark on social welfare schemes. So, Messi, you can see clearly here that there are ideological differences. And you couldn't be a conservative today saying you don't like taxes, you don't like immigration, and then tomorrow you now say, oh, I'm in the Labour Party. Who love taxes? Who love immigration? You know, the, the voters will just see you as someone who is flip-flopping, who has no uh, uh, conscience, you don't have you don't, we, they don't know where you are standing. But in Nigeria, it's totally a different case. People are just using political parties as platforms to gain elective positions. You All were right, speaking about... Agule, uh, yes. Yes, th that point has been established now. But it, it, it brings me back, you know, to the fact that you answered to the question that there are no restrictions, there are no legal restrictions whatsoever. And it's a case of morality. And for when did morality become law? That's another thing, you know, we need to begin to look at. So uh, what do you make of the or your state uh, situation where you have uh, the deputy governor impeach? On what grounds is the question? Why do you impeach him? Because they moved. I mean, if there are no restrictions, then it's okay. Uh, as, like you rightly also mentioned, the Constitution guarantees a freedom of association. And so... Uh, what does morality have to do with this? Why should he be impeached? Do you think that this is right? No, it's not right. It's not right, but again, there is a moral issue there. Morality because, is not law. Yes, morality is not law, and that is why what the House of Assembly in Oyo State has done is also legal. The, the, in fact, the, the impeached deputy governor went to court and he was trying to stop the impeachment process. But he didn't succeed. The court said the state legislature had the constitutional right to carry on with the process. So legally, what happened to him in New York State is right. But on, on, there, there is morality on both sides. You see, the thing is that we're talking about elections. We're talking about uh, the electorate. The elector electorate, ele electorates in advanced democracies, they are not only looking at the legal aspect of what politicians are doing. They are also looking at the moral aspect. A politician can be doing the right thing, but that thing cannot sit well. If it doesn't sit well with the electorate, the electorate are going to reject them at the polls, even though the politician has not broken any law. So there is morality here on both sides. For instance, the deputy governor himself, you contested the election on the joint ticket in the PDP with your governor, and you were elected. You have your own agenda. You now wake up tomorrow, and you say you are defecting to the opposition party, the All Progressive Congress. But you don't want to let go of the mandate that you received. You see, people voted him into office based on the PDP agenda that they felt was better than the APC agenda. And now you are leaving a PDP to go to APC, but you don't want to cede the office. You, you still want to sit. So how can you be an APC man as deputy governor trying to implement an agenda with a PDP governor when the two agendas are not the same? So that is the moral question on the side of the impeached deputy governor. On the side of the governor himself and the Oyo State House, House of Assembly, again, there is a question of morality because, look, They've impeached the man now on the basis that uh, he, he, was, he was found, there were misconduct and all sorts of allegations against him. When did they realize that this man was uh, carrying out mis misconduct in office? All this while, when he was in PDP, these misconduct allegations did not surface. It's only when the man has now jumped ship, APC, that you now suddenly realize that, oh, this man has been doing A, B, and C, that is not right. So... Again, you cannot see that for the electorate, all these shenanigans is like insulting them, insulting their sensibilities, because they couldn't have allowed a man who was uh, carrying out misconduct in office to have been in office for, for three years now, since they were elected in 2019. So there are, these are all the moral issues that electorate in Nigeria, as Nigeria's democracy is maturing, the electorate begin 
they need to begin to look at. All right, Mr. Gule, uh, uh, we're being prompted to go now. Uh, we're being prompted to go, but yeah. just quickly uh, before we leave, uh, the question here now is. The deputy governor has been impeached, and with all of the shenanigans that you have mentioned, you said that it's been shrouded in the fact that he decamped, and all of the excuses has been put out may just be an excuse, because prior to this time, he was still part of the system, or just close to when he's defected. So now that you know a deputy governor can be impeached for defecting, who then impeaches the governor? Because we still have governors who have defected, and nothing has happened to them. So, of course, I am from Benue State. My current governor, Otum, he won the election under the APC in his first tenure. He now decamped to PDP and won his second tenure on uh, PDP. So, they are jumping up and down like that. But uh, nobody is impeaching them because these governors have the, the status of assemblies in their pocket. And that is one area where our democracy must mature to. The legislature is not meant to be errant boys. The Speaker of the State House of Assembly is not meant to be a senior special assistant to a governor. He is heading, and he is heading a, a, an arm of government. The legislature is a different arm of government. So we, the people of Nigeria, instead of focusing our attention on the executives, we need to begin to focus our attention on the legislative arm of government because that's where we pressure them Nick. and they can go and do the right thing with the governor including removing him. So far, we pay attention too much on the governors and uh, the president. And we're not looking at members of the National Assembly or state legislature. There are a lot of people you ask them, Nick, who is your you. member of the House of Assembly? We they have to go now. Know. We have to go. You know. Thank you so much, Nick Agule, for being part of the show this morning. Maybe we come to a point where we have to agree that there should be some legal restrictions on uh, you know, parties or persons who would defect. Maybe we need to begin to consider affecting this legislation or putting laws to ensure that uh, we protect our democracy. However, that's the much we can take this morning on The Breakfast. Once again, Nick, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you so much, Mercy. Nigerians, voter registration ends on the 31st. Please, please, if you don't have a voter's card, go and register. Thank you. All right. Very important to get your PVC because your PVC is your power. That's the size of the breakfast this morning. We'll return tomorrow with more interesting conversation and great analysis and insights. Stay with us. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Abopo. Have a fantastic Tuesday.